I think that most of us have lost a sense of who we are uh, for whatever reason. Um, some people think that they're not enough or they've just forgotten where they come from. And um, I was a little girl who loved Yvonne Chaka Chaka. She was African but still sang in English. And because I have chosen to just remain who I am, I think that I have a lot of power. And that's what makes me Emily Havola. You don't know what it's like to have true freedom after all. And the so Eden is about trying to find yourself without losing yourself. And I think as young people, uh, for me personally growing up, like I kind of had like a shift in my identity. I didn't understand who I was because I was trying to be something because everybody was telling me that that's what I was. And uh, the biggest thing was just how, because I sang in English, everyone was telling me that I wasn't proud of who I was. But I couldn't have been anything more than what I already, I already was. The writing of the song is kind of funny. Um, so I remember I was in my mom's car and I just sat down and I'm like, God, I, I really want a song that would describe me. I want a song that will speak about me. And so the opening line of the song started playing in my head and I'm like da So there I sent a voice message to my producer, Legend said, I don't know what I want for the chorus exactly, but it would be something like da 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 take us back to Aiden or something like that. And then it goes into like a deep beat. That's where the whole Zamrock thing I was talking about can come in. And so he played it on the guitar, I loved it, and I told him to go and make the song. I told him I wanted it to be uh, a little bit Afrocentric, and he went and did an amazing job. Music to me is an outlet. Um, I'm not very good with expressing myself like while I speak, which is funny because I still use words to express myself in music, but I think that it's, it's more fun when there's a melody to it and you know, a character to it. Maybe you're writing about a character in your mind and it's just easier to just imagine that you're speaking through somebody else. I remember when my parents di discovered that I could sing, um, I don't remember specifically how old I was, but my mom says I was three, which to me is ridiculous because I, I remember the picture. Emily used to sing. She liked Don Juan and uh, Lutricia. Okay, that, that was my music also. She um, could listen to music with my mom and she'd sing along and she'd know all the lyrics without her. Well, she was young, so obviously she couldn't even read. I can't say it was like a specific genre. I just loved all kinds of things because I always listened to what my mom listened to. Don Moen, I still listen to till today. And I know some people are like, who still listens to that? I love it. I love Savage Garden, Michael Learns to Rock, Michael Jackson. I love Michael Jackson. I was obsessed with Michael Jackson. I saw Emily taking much interest in singing when she was like 12 years old, if I remember correctly. I first stepped into the studio when I was like 12 years old. Um, my friend, uh, his name's L Legendary. Um, I know him as Leonard. Uh, he took me to the studio and he wanted me to sing on a chorus. And uh, so we went there and I sang. I guess he just knew that I could sing. Uh, so after that, my interest grew and I recorded my very first single at 13, like the following year. Uh, and from there, it just went uphill, I guess. You can do it. Since I was, I was a kid, I just believed that I was always different because I saw it through how when I wanted to watch Sesame Street, but other kids were like, what's this? You know, you're singing a song and they don't like it, or you say a certain word, like distracted. <laughs> and people are like, cause like, I'm like four or five years old. So like from the time I was young, I think I've just always been different. Emily was a shy girl and uh, she was uh, very creative anyway. I was a shy kid. I still am a shy person, but I'm more outgoing now. 
I remember one one time she was supposed to say a poem entitled "I'm a Baby," but unfortunately she was crying. Uh, otherwise, when we were in class, she would say it loud and clear. But maybe she was shy, you know, when you're in a group of people. Most of the memories I have as a kid, they were not funny at the time, but they're funny now. My biggest memory has to be all my birthday parties, because my mom would just always throw me birthday parties. Starting from one year old up to 14 years, every year we used to do a birthday party. Emily has been a child who's been raised as like, I don't want to say spoiled, but she's always had parties. Like, I remember once on her birthday, she had this Botswana thing, Makirikiri thing. I don't know what they call it exactly. And then, so we, we get home and it's like, surprise! My grandma is there, my cousins are there. And she takes me to the room and there's this dress that I really love. <laughs> I really love that dress. It wasn't like the dress, but I, I loved it at the time. Emily uh, acted like a boy since she was young. Yeah, even uh, her dressing, just like a boy. I used to buy her uh, clothes, a uh, boy's clothes. She only had boys anyway, so I understand. She dressed like a boy too. Emily's sense of style is weird. I don't know if I can try to categorize it, but like it's goth and you know, it's just weird but amazing and fun. So I kind of mixed it up. Sometimes I'm a little bit gothic. Um, I like baggy clothes. I don't like tight clothes that, you know, you know. Even her hairstyle, dressing, it's just like a boy. Most of uh, Emily's pictures, I'm the one who took them. Growing up, I spent a lot of time with my mom. Um, it was difficult making friends because like, I was just always the different one, the one who was boring, who wanted to watch things that nobody else wanted. <laughs> she used to annoy me. <laughs> when we go to town, any shop we enter, if there are uh, like uh, toys, should be there, mommy buy this for me, mommy I want to do, mommy I want this. I remember Odie's mall during, while I was growing up had like a lot of toys. So every time we went there, I would cry for these things. As far as I can remember, she's, she's grown up being a person who's for things. <laughs> uh, so yeah, my, I was very close to my mom and if she wasn't around, I would spend a lot of time with my grandma. Needs more hours a day. This is my grandma, my mom's mama. This is her house. You don't know what it's like to have true freedom after all. And the prophecies don't seem to come to pass. So this is where I grew up. If it looked in retrospect, you know it is more you could have had. And you wonder why it ended up this bad. Take it back to you. So right by that door, there's a picture I took when I was young. I was standing like this and I was in a t-shirt and underwear. <laughs> I'm the type of person who grew up imagining I was a rock star and like in our country, that's it's not a big thing. I didn't know Emily would be an artist because she wanted to be a lawyer. She wanted to, to study law. Me taking music up as like a career was like a very scary thing for me. So my passion and my freedom of expression is just what helps me because like if I lose that opportunity, then like where will I get it? Outside of that, of course, I'm a Christian and God is like a huge, huge part of my life. And so just having that conversation with him like, is this what you want me to do? <laughs> you know, because I feel he picked it for me and that my life was designed specifically for this path. I've always known Emily would be a full-time artist because of 
just how much she loves doing what she what she does and just the passion that she puts in it. We all have like a, a unique way of expressing ourselves. We have a unique way of telling the stories that we tell. And we also have unique stories. Uh, and so I think that if you never get to hear me, then there's definitely something somewhere that could be lacking. Once upon a time I was over here. I love Emily's uh, music. I do. I do. I like her music so much. I just love the feeling I get when I successfully make a song. When I sit down, I write. My producer does a great job with the beat. We record and everything comes together. There's just this pride that I have about it. And I think there's nothing that can describe that feeling. Um, it's really hard to say what it is, but I do feel there's just a lot of freedom there and I don't have to worry about pleasing anybody. I don't have to worry about a boss who's gonna get mad that I didn't meet a deadline, <laughs> you know. So yeah, it's, it's, it's freeing and it's amazing. I love you, don't mean anything no more, no more. You chose to lie, look me in the eye and say you didn't know. Can't be broken further. Was already broken anyway. I'm very proud of my Emily. I want to see her succeed in whatever she's doing. I don't want her to listen to people, just focus on what you are doing. I want to see her maybe to be like Beyonce <laughs> or more. I want to see Emily go as far as having a wax figure. Well, I want her to get a Grammy, I want her to be on the walk of fame. Yeah, that's how far I want to see her. I am very proud of the woman that she has become and I'm very excited and looking forward to the woman that she will be. I have chosen to stay true to myself. I've chosen to remember where I come from and stick to that. I think that most of us have lost a sense of who we are uh, for whatever reason. Um, some people think that they're not enough or they've just forgotten where they come from. And because I have chosen to just remain who I am, I think that I have a lot of power. And that's what makes me Emily Havola. Don't have a life that you may one day regret If they stepped you in the bed Would you look back and realize Forgiveness is for you you free